Hello and welcome to another video by me, Tilatacos. In this video, we are going to be making a closet hiding system and also a very simple addition to the NPC that we made in some videos ago. I'm going to show, show you how to make this actually work with the NPC in a very simple way. And I'm, we're going to begin here with just a small showcase on how this will actually look like. So as you can see, we can get this and we can hide here. And we have this little uh, effect here and we can go out of it. And this works best in first person. Um, but if we go in third person here, see that do something like that and then it will be something like that. So it works, it's just a little bit better in first person. And as you can see, this guy will kill us now and we can hide. And yeah, just like that. So I think we should just begin with the video. So in an empty base plate, I've added in uh, the clo a closet that I made. And this will be linked down in the description of the video. But I'm also going to just go through this and explain how everything works in this closet. So the first thing we have is actually the base. This is just some parts that I made into a union with this button right here. Then I have two handles and I have two doors, which are just parts. Then I also have two hinges and these hinges are just invisible parts that are placed like at the side of the door. And what you need to do is you need to anchor these hinges and turn can collide off. And with the doors and the handles, you need to unanchor them. And then what you need to do is inside of the hinges, you have to actually weld them. Uh, one weld for the door. So the part zero is going to be hinge and part one is going to be door. And then another weld for the handle, which is this handle right here. And then the same for the other hinge. So these will basically follow the hinge when it rotates. Inside this, I also have an inside camera. When you're inside of a closet, this is basically where your cam camera is going to be located. And then I also have an outside camera, which is basically the same thing, but this is where the camera is going to go when you exit the closet. I also have an outside position or pause. That's where your character is going to be. And an inside pause where your character is also going to be inside. And yeah, just make sure you have the hinges and all of these parts. And then you also need a pump part. And this is basically just going to be an invisible part that is anchored with a proximity prompt inside of it. And what we also need to do is we need to make a new folder inside of the workspace and name it closet or whatever, but I'm going to name it closet. And then I'm going to add a remote event into replica storage called hide event. And then I'm also going to quickly create a very simple UI. So I'm going to call this closet or actually hide, hide uh, UI. And inside this, I'm going to make a frame call it, call it effect. And I'm just going to scale this so it fills the whole screen. Oh, sorry. 1,0,1,0. And then I'm going to make a UI gradient inside of this. I'm going to click this. And then in the middle right here, I'm going to do like that. And change this to black. So as you can see, it gets kind of uh, black on the sides. Then I'm gonna turn this down a little bit so it looks something like that, which looks pretty cool, I think. And then what you need to do also is enable ignore UI inset. And then I'm just going to set this background transparency to one. There we go. Now we can begin with the scripting. 
So firstly, create a script into the folder we created and name it something like handler. And I'm going to define some services, queen service, game get service queen service. I'm also going to get replicated storage. And then I'm going to get the event we created. So rip storage with the child hide events, this right here. And then I'm going to get, get the clause sets. So the clause is basically going to be script of parent get children. If you have the script inside of the folder, else it would just be something like workspace dot closets. Either one works. And then we're going to loop through all of these. So for i comma v in pairs, closets, do. So v is basically going to be the model. And we're also going, going to check if it's actually a model, so it's not the script. So, sorry, if it's a model, then we want to set player hiding. So just a new variable called player hiding. We're going to set that to nil. And we're also going to define the prompt. Prompt, it's going to be v.prompt. As you can see, we have the prompt part, dot prompt. And then we're going to do prompt dot triggered. Connect. Uh, connect function. And inside of this, we're going to get the player. We're gonna, uh, going to get the character of the player. And if we don't find the character, then we're just going to return. So exit out of this. And uh, if not, player hiding. Then, so if we don't have a player hiding in the closet currently, we're gonna disable, uh, disable the prompt so we can't click it again. Because this is basically going to trigger, right? So when we trigger this, we're going to check, oh, is there someone hiding in the closet? If there's no one hiding in the closet, then we want to set the one hiding in the closet to be the player that clicked on it. And then we want to do a character pivot to v.inside pos.cframe. So basically, that is going to be, right, this position where the character is going to be. And then we're also going to just do character.humanoid.walkspeed is equal to zero. And character.humanoid.jumppower is going to be zero. And if you're not using jump power, which you can see right here inside of the started player, uh, you can see it right here. If you have, if you don't have this enabled, you will have to time jump height, or you can just enable that. Either way, I'm just going to use jump power. Then I'm going to fire the event, so fire, fire client with the player and the model, and I'm going to wait like let's say 0 0.5 seconds maybe. And I'll on share event connect function player comma model and we're going to check so this is basically how this closet is going to work is if you're inside of it and you press any of the movement keys for example W A S or D uh, you're going to send an event to the server. Uh, that basically tells you, oh, I want to exit out of the closet. So if model is equal to V, so if it's the same model uh, that it wants to get out of, we're going to pivot the character to the outside position.
and we're going to set these two I'm just going to set them you can set them to whatever I'm just going to set them to like 16 and 50 uh, which is the default then I'm going to wait like 1.5 seconds and I'm going to enable the prompt again set the player hiding to nil because there's no one hiding it now and player dot are actually let's not do that so there we go but we are missing something inside of the script we also need to do the animation for actually opening the doors so let's make a new function called animation and inside of this function we're gonna pass through the model and the action. So firstly, we're going to find the hinge one model wait for child hinge one. And then we're also going to get the hinge two. And these are these two parts that we created or yes. And then we're going to check if the action is equal to exit. Then. So if you want to actually exit out of the closet. Uh, we can actually start by doing the one entering. So when we enter the closet. So else if action. You get to enter. Then. So when we enter the closet. We want to actually have a tween that opens the door. So first we're going to create a tween info. So tween info dot new. And we're going to say like 0 0.5 seconds with the tween. We're going to use sign. I mean I'm gonna use sign. Uh, and then I'm going to do you can play around with this. Do, uh, try different things out. You don't have to follow exactly what I type here. But I'm going to do like sign in out. Oh in out. just like that and then I'm actually going to create a tween so we're going to do tween service create so we're going to firstly do the hinge one with the tween info and we want to set the C frame of this hinge to be equal to the hinge dot C frame times C frame dot angles and then we do like zero and then we have to type math.radians for math.rad for uh, for it to be able to calculate correctly with c frame dot angles and we're going to do something like let's say a hundred and then zero and then we're just going to play that tune and we're going to make another one but instead of one we're going to do two and two and because of this, this is the other side, we have to actually do it the opposite way. So we have to do minus 100. And then we're just going to play that. And then we're going to wait the time for the twin to be done. So we can actually use the twin info of time, as we said here. So it's going to be 0 0.5. And we're going to create a new twin info. Because maybe you want different. Uh, animations on from opening and closing it so we're going to create a new one which is going to be tween info dot new 0 0.5 I'm just going to do uh, actually just the same one but you can change it if you want and then we're going to create the tween again so create and this is going to be the hinge one we can actually copy what we have right here so the hinge one is going to be minus and I'm actually going to do 80 here because I don't want this to close all the way because as you could see in the preview you can actually see a little through it which adds a little bit of detail and you can actually see out of the closet and over here I'm just going to do 80. So now that we know we only close it to 80 we can actually make this one so let's just copy what we have right here paste it in here 
And instead of this, we're actually going to do 80 here. Because that's uh, how much it needs to be for it to actually be 100 or 0. And then we're going to do minus 80 here as well. We're going to just copy this right here. And then we can actually copy and copy that right there. And then we're going to do 100. Or sorry, minus 100 and 100. And we want to activate this function right here when we enter. So we can do enter and then we can do V. And we also want to do it right here when we exit. Exit. So let's actually try that out. So when we go into this and we put E, you can see that something is not completely right. So let's see here. This door opened a little bit weirdly. So let's see here. So when we enter, so we have hinge one, hinge one, I see. And hinge two here and hinge two and let's see hinge one hinge two he's one yes so we forgot to change that of course so now let's see here so you can see it opens and it closes pretty cool and that's actually almost all for this script but if you were to actually have an AI for this, so I'm going to take the AI we made in the last video. And we need this to in here. We will actually see that maybe this would not be fully uh, Working. Oh, sorry. I actually have an error here. That is from a later thing. So, but basically, what I'm trying to say is that this AI would sometimes be able to see through. If you have a, maybe a, like a smaller closet, it would be able to see through and basically kill you anyways sometimes. And we don't want that. So, as you can see on this error, we're actually going to add in. A hiding value inside of the player when they join. So we do game of players dot player added. I'm going to use player. And we can actually create a new value. Inside of the player. And we can set this hiding dot name to be hide. hiding that value to be false so this will basically prevent even if this NPC sees you as you can see I added one bit of code on line 53 of my old NPC that says and player hiding that value is equal to false and then so if you want this to work with my NPC you can add this on line 53 and if we actually go here now and test this out You can see that it, it doesn't go after me anymore. And even if we were to actually like this delete these doors, it would go after me. So I see. So I forgot <laughs> one important thing, which is basically setting the value <laughs> when we're actually hiding. So just right here. Uh, we can actually do it like right here. We can just set player to be false. Player dot hiding a value to be false or actually true, and then right over, let's do it over here. 
it's affected false. So now, as you can see, uh, we can actually go in here and hide in here. And even now, if we decided to delete the stores, so they can actually see us anyways, it would not go after us because it actually thinks that we're hiding, which we are. And that's good. So that's working. And now this is beginning to be a very long video already at about 20 minutes. So I will have to do a part two on this video as well. I don't really want to do part twos because it is actually not very good for uh, views and it's kind of annoying for you guys to uh, have to watch two videos. But as always, the link to all the scripts and the models is down in the description with actually part two in it as well. So you can just go and get that uh, right now actually, even without the tutorial. But I am going to go through the local script for this in the next video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. It's amazing, we're, we're I think we're almost at 250 subscribers soon, which is insane. And yeah, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in another video. Goodbye.